Welcome to the land of the rising sun, where the vibrant culture, ancient traditions, and modern technology collide into a stunningly beautiful and unique experience. From the bustling metropolis of Tokyo to the serene temples of Kyoto, Japan is a country that will leave you in awe. Explore the neon lit streets of Shinjuku, indulge in some mouth watering street food, and immerse yourself in the vibrant nightlife. Take a ride on the busiest train station in the world, witness the iconic cherry blossoms, and relax in a ryokan. Discover the history and culture of Japan as you visit the ancient temples of Nara, the stunning Osaka Castle, and the peaceful gardens of Kyoto. In this series of videos, join me, my mom and brother, in exploring Japan and Korea for 24 days during the Sakura season. In this second episode, we are going to explore as if it's our first time in Japan. We'd visit Shibuya for its vibrant streets, trendy shops, and nightlife that never sleeps. We'll end up in Kawagoe, an hour day trip outside of Tokyo to see remnants of Japan's Edo period, and Shinjuku, a dazzling metropolis full of skyscrapers, neon lights, and bustling streets. But first, we need to have a Suica card. Make sure to get a Suica card from a vending machine if you cannot load your Suica card into your digital wallet in your phone. It's the best. You just have the top on and off train stations. You can use it to pay convenience stores, duty free shops, restaurants. And for our first day in Japan, I thought it would be nice to visit some famous Instagram spots in Shibuya. So we took the Yamanote line to Shibuya and exit out of Hachiko exit. So this is Hachiko. Hachi is a Japanese Akita dog very famous for being super loyal to his owner, Hidesabara Ueno, who's, a, who's an agricultural scientist and uh, who passed away a couple of years after taking Hachiko in. This area was said to be their meeting spot where Hachiko waits for his owner every time he comes home. And for years until even after his owner's death, Hachiko was seen waiting for Hidesabara Ueno in the same spot until Hachiko passed at the age of 11. And while I was yapping about Hachiko, we took uh, the pedestrian overpass towards Sakura Street. It's easy if you take the escalator in Shibuya Mark City. It's going to take you right on the level of the pedestrian overpass. This one's right in front of Family Mart. If you want to beat the crowd, you have to get there super early or super late. We left our hotel around 6.30 and took the Yamanota line. We got around this area around 7, 7.30. After this, I thought we should visit uh, the Starbucks Roastery in Nakameguro, right by the Meguro River, because there's uh, going to be a lot of cherry blossoms around that area. But we decided to stop by the one right here in Tutaya. This is Shibuya Mark City. So we took the overpass towards Shibuya Mark City, took the escalator down towards Shibuya Scramble. By the way, in the basement of this building, you're going to see a lot of uh, anime, uh, not anime, a lot of manga, but the mangas are in Japanese. This building is the Shibuya Scramble building, and that's what you're going to walk towards to if you're planning to visit Shibuya Sky. I'm not really into visiting American chains whenever I travel, but it's Sakura Donut. They have seasonal products.
It would have been nice to see Starbucks Roastery by the Megara River, but for you to hail a, cax, a taxi from this area, you have to walk at least a mile away from the train station. We tried to call a taxi, but the app is asking me to walk far away from the train station, and after walking for a few minutes, there's no taxi available. I'm not gonna tell you which app I was using, but you should maybe you should try using a different app that's local in the area, like the Go Taxi app in Japan. Maybe you'd have more success calling a taxi if you use the Go Taxi app. We are trying to minimize a lot of walking because it's still too early and we don't want to be exhausted at the start of the day. So instead of uh, visiting Megara River for cherry blossoms and Starbucks Roaster, we decided to go to Little Edo in Saitama Prefecture. It's an hour train ride away from Tokyo. This is Kawagoe. It's full of uh, traditional buildings and uh, traditional shops. We're on our way to Kawagoe Kawa Shrine. It's uh, a couple of minutes walk from the train station. So walk, don't walk in the center. So the Tori Gate that we just passed divides the earthly world from the sacred world in Shinto religion. And you are supposed to walk to the side of the walkway because the gods use the middle, the middle of the path. Japan is going to be so full of tourists right about now and there are actually shrines and I've seen one in Osaka where the basin is not, is empty. They stopped the, the water from running because they might be afraid of uh, the sea's vectors and you, if you are concerned about getting neurovirus or COVID-19, it's probably a good idea to skip the cleansing ritual for now. There are five gods enshrined in Kawagoe Kawa Shrine, including Sasano. Sasano is Amaterasu's brother. Amaterasu is the god of the sun. His wife is also enshrined here, Kushina Dahime and their son, and his parents-in-law. And because the gods enshrined here are two couples and a family of three, a lot of people pray here for marriage and their family. One of the main reasons why I love this shrine is because of the riverbank right behind it. It's lined with hundreds of cherry blossom trees. So if you are planning to visit Japan during the Sakura season, it might be a good idea for you to visit Kawagoe Hikawa Shrine. You would find the riverbank as not as crowded as maybe Chidori Kafuchi Park or other Sakura spots inside Tokyo. If you are planning to visit Japan for the next Sakura season, it's going to be a challenge to predict when it's going to be. Because of climate change, the sakura trees keeps blooming a week earlier every year. But just because the sakura trees bloomed in the middle of March this year doesn't mean that it's gonna bloom again in the middle of March next year. This is my grumpy brother and I thought he's gonna be so much better than my mom in taking photos, but this is what it looks like. I would say he definitely did a great job in capturing the scenery. Bonus points for not capturing the pores of my skin. I also took their photos and I think I did a bad job in capturing the scenery. I don't know what he said but if an old person is screaming at you in Asia, you have to run away. Confucianism in Asia taught kids that they have to respect older people. If you don't respect older people, your mom, your tiger mom, or your dad might run after you with a slipper to the face, or a bamboo stick to the butt, or any kind of um, corporal punishment really. 
My dad is probably the best in doing this because I probably have a lot of scars on my butt because I'm a troublemaker and I probably deserve it. Anyway, we are back in the sacred ground of Kawagawa Hikawa Shrine and we are going to enter a tunnel of Emma. Emma is wooden plaque. It's a wooden plaque where you write your wishes and prayers to the kami or to the god in the shrine. And for a small offering here, it says uh, they want 300 yen. You can put 300 yen in the box and get an omikoji. Omikoji is uh, fortune papers. Some other shrines, they have fortune sticks. If you get good luck, you can keep it or you can still, you can tie it in the shrine for more luck. Or if you get a bad fortune paper, you can tie it in the shrine and pray that it doesn't happen to you. We are currently walking on Hanmachidori. If you walk straight, you will end up in Kashiya Yokocha, famous for candy shops, traditional Japanese candy shops. And then if you turn left, you will end up in Little Edo Warehouse District. And we just entered a warehouse in Little Edo Warehouse District. This is Monzuwan. Hi, Mamiya. Yeah. If you grew up in an old house in the Philippines or anywhere in Asia, chances are you probably used a poso or a deep well pump. This 160 year old restaurant is famous for their sweets and sweet potatoes. Actually, not just this restaurant, Kawagoa is popular for their sweet potatoes. So you're gonna see a lot of sweet potato products all over the place. And then from an old warehouse to another Edo style warehouse, we entered Shunkashuto. It's an udon place owned by a 230 year old soy sauce brewery. And because they own their own brewery, a lot of their dishes were made with soy sauce, even the desserts. But don't worry, they use sweet soy sauce for the desserts. Another good thing with this restaurant is the prices are not that expensive. Kakiyage is Japanese okoi. Kakiyage is tempura. They also have another specialty. It's called pork kakuni. It's pork braised in soy sauce until it's very tender. Beautiful assorted tempura. Mm. And if you're curious about how soy sauce is made, you can visit the factory for a tour. Yes, they have their own soy sauce park. So the ceramic glass is chilled. It's frozen. Come on, let me along. It's frozen. Frozen, yeah. Yes, it's frozen. It's perfect for It's like the chicken and So this is a local dish called Hiyajiro. It's basically a cold noodle soup. And it tastes like summer and maybe that's why they only op offer it during uh, the warm months from April to September. So this is a restaurant by the soy sauce brewery so you must try the soy sauce and it's really good you can actually buy it too they have a shop in front of the restaurant if you love tempura noodles especially udon noodles this restaurant is for you it's really good it works it worked really well with the soy sauce they have really good soy sauce the restaurant is beautiful too it's an old warehouse turned into a modern restaurant if you are into architecture I think you're going to appreciate the the high ceiling and the design of the place. Warehouse.
After stuffing our face with some really good noodles and tempura, we decided to walk towards the bell tower, Tokinokane. And on, on, on your way to the bell tower, you're gonna see all of these beautiful shops. And if you love shopping and eating, this place is for you, really. Tokinokane means bell of time, and the current bell tower right now is a reconstructed version of the old one from the 1600s. And because there are no skyscrapers in the area, and Tokinokane is the tallest uh, building in town, it really does feel like you are in Edo period. Right behind the bell tower, it was said that people come and pray in Yakushi Shrine for healing, especially if they have eye diseases. And right beside the Yakushi Shrine, you'd find a Starbucks. If Kyoto has a Starbucks in a Ryokan, Kawagoe has a Starbucks in an old warehouse and it's kind of modernized, it's really beautiful and spacious and right behind the Starbucks uh, warehouse is a beautiful Japanese garden. The food and drinks are the same but definitely try the seasonal products that you can only find in Japan. After taking a break in this beautiful garden in Starbucks Kawagoe, definitely check the other shops all over the place. There's going to be a lot of street food, a lot of restaurants, a lot of beautiful shops to check out. A few steps away from Starbucks is Woodworks Kawagoe, where you can make your personalized solid wood chopsticks for 1600 yen. There is just so much to do and so much to see and so much to buy. This place is dangerous if you love shopping. And on our way to the train station, we decided to stop by Rankeiji Temple. It's a really old Buddhist temple with a lot of history. A lot of people come here for healing and also for cherry blossoms every spring. After soaking in the beautiful and serene atmosphere of the temple, we decided to go back towards Tokyo and take the train. There's so many shops still on our way to the train station. My mom and brother said they are tired, so I decided to let them go back to the hotel while I continue with a tour. So from the Shinjuku station, we are going to walk towards Shinjuku Gyoan National Garden. The Gyoen in Shinjuku Gyoen National Garden means imperial. This garden used to be owned by the royalty, the Japanese royalty. They still have their rest house in this garden. It's huge and we have hundreds of different species of cherry blossoms. This one's a double petaled cherry blossom called Yae Sakura. They bloom later than Some Yoshino where which is uh, what they use to predict sakura season. So when they say the cherry blossoms are going to bloom this March, they only mean the Some Yoshino varieties, but not really the Yae Sakuras. Uh, the Yae Sakuras bloom at least two weeks after Some Yoshino. So if you are late to the sakura season, don't, don't be scared, you can still come by. Shinjuku Gyoen National Garden or any other garden and temples and Shinto shrines all over the all over Japan and I was lucky to be able to stop by during sunset it's beautiful the lighting is perfect and there's not a lot of people actually there's a lot of people but it's not very crowded entrance fee is 500 yen around three dollar and fifty cents after strolling around the park, I decided to, to go back to Shinjuku. Our hotel is located in Kabukicho. It's very lively. It has a lot of neon lights and it has Godzilla. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stop by Godzilla. So not a lot of people are crazy about Godzilla. So not a lot of people come here. We're going to go to the 8th floor of Gramercy Hotel. The entrance is to the left side of 
the building if you are uh, in front of Godzilla. Just take the elevator to the 8th floor, stop by the cafe, grab a drink, and then you can view Godzilla. And guess what? From 12 to 8 o'clock at night, Godzilla screams every hour from 12 noon to 8 o'clock. There is also a little bit of a light show. This might be a little scary for kids, but this is kind of cute for me. By the way, the, the skyscraper right behind Godzilla is the newly opened Tokyo Kabukicho Tower. It boasts a lot of attractions that your kids might want to try. You have games in Namco. Uh, Tokyo, you can play games. There's a state of the art cinema, there's a theater, there's a yokocho or a food hall where you can eat, and uh, there's a couple of hotels in the tower as well. This is also the first skyscraper or the first building designed by a woman in Japan. So, Japan is fairly conservative, but there's definitely progress. Our hotel is right beside this building, so I went to grab my mom and brother who's taking a rest in the hotel and decided to stop by Jindako. This is a fast food chain in Japan, popular for their octopus balls and highball. The first time I took a tour, a food tour in Japan, our guide took us here and I remember the place to be very good really delicious a lot of different kinds of octopus balls different flavors and different gimmicks i i really love their sakura highball but this time they don't have any more sakura highball if it is your first time eating octopus balls just make sure you take tiny bites or else you're going to burn the roof of your mouth it's really hot you have to give it at least 10 minutes to cool down after dinner, my mom and brother decided to go back to the hotel and I decided to roam around. This is Omoide Yokocho or Memory Lane. It's famous for little stalls, little yakitori places in Shinjuku. And also another one of my favorites is this one. This is Gyokatsu Mutamura. It's very popular for deep fried wagyu that's not very expensive. And also don't forget to grab desserts from convenience stores, they have really good pudding. That's it for today, thank you so much for watching this video, please like and subscribe, see you in my next vlog.